All right, you're good. <laughs> okay, so just to review what we did, um, we shone a laser beam through one focal lens, a second focal lens, and we hit it off a rotating mirror, M sub R, and it reflected to a concave fixed mirror over here across the room, it reflected back, during, during which time the rotating mirror had slightly moved. So as it reflected back through the second lens, hit the beam splitter and was projected through the microscope, we noticed a displacement of the original laser beam dot, and we're gonna call that displacement delta S prime. Um, so our first equation, we're going to consider um, the distance between the two points uh, on which the laser beam hit the fixed mirror, and we're gonna call those points, the first point, capital S, and the second point, capital S sub one. And so the difference between those will be equal to the distance times uh, two times that first angle, which is the whole angle of rotation, uh, minus two times theta, which is our initial angle. And just to explain why it's double theta, a little more in depth, um, I'm gonna to turn to this board. Um, and on this board, we see basically the same setup, but separated into two, mo two, two moments. In the first moment, we're gonna consider the light from the laser beam as if it were uh, a single pulse. And as it travels through those lenses and hits the rotating mirror, um, the rotating mirror, we're gonna say, is already uh, rotated at some angle, and we're gonna call that angle theta. Uh, so in other words, this angle is our angle of incidence. When this line drawn on the right side is drawn perpendicular to the axis that connects the rotating mirror and the laser. And since we know from optics that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, um, that means that if we were to draw uh, a perpendicular to this left-hand line here, um, sorry, that would be this line here, we know that this angle theta should be the same as the angle of reflection here. Um, and since we know that this was drawn at right angles, uh, we can imagine that whole right angle rotated down, uh, thus making another angle theta with the axis. Um, so that total angle that the laser was reflected through off that mirror is equal to double theta or two theta. And uh, the point that it hits the fixed mirror at, we're gonna call capital S. So in our second scenario, we're gonna imagine that laser, a laser beam is again uh, cast as a single impulse uh, towards the rotating mirror. But instead of having angle theta, we're gonna have angle theta sub one, or in other words, theta plus some change in theta, delta theta. Um, and using the same principles that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, we're gonna know that this angle that the laser is reflected upon should be double our initial angle, which is two times theta plus delta theta. And that projected point should be slightly in this direction uh, at the point capital S sub one. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our original board to explain why this equation stands. Um, so in the parentheses, we see why we're dealing with doubles of theta. Um, and effectively, this distance, S sub one minus S, which is up here in our diagram, that's being treated as if it were the arc of a circle. Um, and so we know that the arc of a circle should be equal to the angle that it's rotated through, so this would be our expression for the angle, times the radius, or in our case, D, capital D, the distance. Um, and that, that is a slightly approximating assumption, I believe. Um, but I, I think since the, the angle that we're dealing with is so small compared to the distance, it's pretty much a negligible uh, simplifying assumption. So in this second line, what we've done is just factored out the two from our above expression. Um, and 
we'll see that the positive two theta will cancel the negative two theta. Um, so we're just left with s sub one minus s is equal to two times d. d is again the distance from rotating mirror to fixed mirror times delta theta, or to, uh, to call s sub one minus s simply delta s. Um, that should be equal to two times d times delta theta. So then we're going to move to our second equation, which is going to express our displacement of the image point, which we're calling delta s prime. Uh, so in this central diagram, uh, this delta s prime should be equal to the image as it comes into focus here, which we're just calling s and s sub 1. Those are the little, little s's. Um, and that's because when, when the light shines through that second lens and hits the beam splitter, um, the beam splitter is just, uh, I guess you could think of it as a lever, it's just taking the, the, the image point as it focuses at this distance and rotating it in this direction. Um, so in other words, th this displacement should be equal to this displacement, which is the first part of this line. Um, and we're going to do a, use a similar idea when we, when we think about the light hitting the rotating mirror. Um, we're going to imagine as if the, the, the light beam is rotated back as if it were a lever arm, just to make the geometry look a bit more simple. So we're going to call this, uh, which is the fixed mirror, um, or a virtual image of the fixed mirror. And Representing it this way will allow us to apply a, a law of optics, um, which essentially states that that displacement point, which we're calling delta S prime or delta S simply, is proportional to uh, the delta capital S, which is the, the points on the fixed mirror. And it's proportional by a coefficient represented by I divided by O. And I is just this distance, which we're calling A. Um, and that's the distance between the focal point of the first lens, here at, at point S, and the, uh, its distance to the second focal lens. And on the denominator, O is simply the distance between the second focal lens and the fixed mirror, or using our variables D plus B. Um, so that's where we're getting the, the second, the, last part of this line. Our third step will be to substitute um, into our equation delta s prime equal to this expression. We're going to substitute delta s from equation one. Two times capital D times delta theta. And that's, that's all we're doing in step three is doing a simple substitution. Um, in equation four, we're going to express uh, angular velocity uh, in terms of the angle, theta. Um, so angular velocity, which is represented by the variable omega, is simply the, the angle, theta, in radians over time. So if we solve that for theta, for our angle, we just rearrange it and get theta is equal to t times omega. Um, and another way to express t, or time, in terms of uh, variables that we do know would be to say it's the distance, d, over the velocity, which is what we're trying to find, the speed of light. Um, distance over velocity reduces to a time variable. Um, so that's, that's what we've done in the fourth equation, is that theta that it's been, uh, the angle that it's, the mirror's been rotated through slightly, um, should be equal to two times capital D, the distance between the fixed and the rotating mirrors, times the angular velocity over the speed of light. Um, now to, to go to our fifth equation. Um, we are simply substituting equation four into equation three. So you'll notice in equation three, we have a delta theta we're going to substitute this expression in for theta, and that's how we get equation five. And in equation five, uh, you'll notice that we have little c, which uh, represents the speed of light. We're going to solve this equation and rearrange the variables for c 
which is how we get equation six. Um, and this is, the, this is the equation that we'll use uh, to calculate the speed of light. And you'll notice that all the variables are things that we either know, can measure, or will know. Um, so again, the speed of light should be equal to four times A. A is the distance between the, second, or the first lens and the second lens minus the focal length of the first lens times D squared, where D is the distance between the rotating mirror and the fixed mirror times the angular velocity of the mirror over d plus b, which is, again, the distance between the rotating and fixed mirrors, plus the distance between the second lens and the rotating mirror, multiplied by the change in our image point, delta s prime. 